I think this objection that I'm about to pose is really an ad hominem, um, but I think there's still something to it in that uh, as people abandon faith in the supernatural, they still seek transcendence yep. and utopia. And maybe that was a big part of the impetus to the UFO craze in the whenever it was, 60s, 70s, earlier in, in the United States. Yeah, it started with the 40s. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so and as I say, it's not a great argument, but what do you say to that? Well, I would say I understand that well. I mean, my atheist period, I ended up getting into the occult and things because I still had this longing for the transcendent. That's exactly how I you know, put it after my conversion and was trying to to feed that you know, that desire with something like that. And I think that is, yeah, that's a good reason why you have a lot of secular people who are thinking about this. And in fact, you're actually finding, I mean, I could point to you in secular writings and podcasts and stuff about the issue of UFOs that um, they're starting to think about, what if, you know, it's almost as if matter and energy isn't everything. It's like there's a whole other dimension here. And, and it's almost as if there's a consciousness that gives rise to the material universe. And I'm sitting there thinking, guys, <laughs> you know, we've been talking about this for 2,000 years. Of course. You just don't have the words for it yet. We are talking about the revelation that is in Christ. That, Yeah, that consciousness, I mean, you may not quite have figured him out, but the consciousness is God. And he does give rise to the universe. He creates it. And yes, there is stuff that's beyond you know, matter and energy, and there are, if you want to call it another dimension, yeah, the dimension of the existence of angels. They don't, they don't move through space. They don't have bodies. Um, so I, th I think, yeah, they really are the longing. But at the same time, that gives me, at least in my book, the opportunity to make some connections with them and say, you know what? You know, these things you're saying, you know, you're really getting at something that, that's true and real. Have you ever considered that the Christian faith is, is talking about the same thing, but in a much more detailed mm -hmm. uh, way that could actually change your life. Um, so that's happening. You During your atheistic period, did you get big into <coughs> UFOs and caught up in that stuff then? Not, no, that was uh, kind of interested before I became an atheist at 12. And then, you know, again, after my conversion at 18. So I, I didn't get it, but I, but I do know folks, you know, who've kind of lost their faith and, they're looking, we, there's actually a name for it among theologians who talk about this kind of stuff. It's called the ETI myth. And it's the notion that extraterrestrial intelligence, ETI, the notion that aliens are going to come here and save us. That they're, it's kind of a messianic notion. They've come here and yeah. they will reveal to there us you go. the truth. I it's mean, even, apes revelation. Yeah. And Have you even, heard of, sorry. Well, I was going to say, even, it's, it strikes me at the, the level, it's not just a popular level. You've got, I won't mention your name, but the person who I think heads up SETI, which is the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, where the big radio, radio tells, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, radio telescopes that are out there searching for any kind of signals that might, radio signals that might indicate. Mm -hmm. And they take very seriously that there are, they've got to be intelligent races out there where maybe we can catch some radio transmissions from them. And this has been going on for years. And very, you know, intelligent person and all that. But um, she actually said, you know, an essay I wrote that, and, and we all know kind of, I'm paraphrasing, but if, um, you know, if they, if they come here, if they survive this long, then that means they've got to really get beyond where we are culturally. And that means there wouldn't be any organized religion because kind of basically everybody knows that's backward mm -hmm. stuff and, yeah. and all that. And then they would be able to tell us the truth in a way that really, mm -hmm. and I'm saying, you know what, you don't realize it, but that's a form of the ETI myth that they're going to save us from ourselves. Yeah. Heaven's Gate, the cult, you know, back in the when was that, the 80s, whenever it was. I mean, they were really explicit about these guys are going to come down and take us away and save us. Have you heard of Father Seraphim Rose? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. He wrote He wrote about the UFO craze. I believe he was very critical of it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, I would, I would agree that there are a lot of folks interested because it's filling some kind of a gap. But again, like you said, again, it's, that's, it's that's not, it, doesn't, it doesn't prove that's anything. That's like saying to the Christian, you only believe because you're <laughs> exactly. afraid of reality, you're afraid yeah. of death. Even if that were the case, it wouldn't be an argument against God yeah. and Christianity. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, all right. Thank you very much for watching that clip. Before you go, do us a favor, click like, click subscribe, and if this really meant something to you, help us out by sharing it.